All right, we're about to go live. Radio silent. Hello, everybody. Welcome to, I think, what is our fifth Facebook Live broadcast. Uh, I am your host, Nathan Paul, and I'm the digital marketing assistant here at Portsmouth Christian Academy. Um, we've got a lot of stuff to get to today, a lot of information that parents, both new um, and parents that have been here for a while, are going to need to know for the upcoming year. Um, it's the Friday before you know our first week of school. There's a huge sense of just excitement, and um, you know people are, are have real high expectations about um, what we're going to have here in the first week of school and uh, what's to come this year. Um, we're going to talk about the mechanics of arrival and dismissal and what that is going to look like. Um, for upper school and lower school parents, we're going to talk about screenings, we're going to talk about safety protocols, um, and we're going to talk about uh, what some of the offsite students might need to know for this year. And we're also just going to talk about some of the expectations for the first few weeks of school, knowing that um, this is PCA's first year of enhanced hybrid learning and uh, parents, we know it's your first year as well. So um, we know that grace is going to abound throughout the first few weeks, and, um, but we're really excited that we're doing this all together. But so I know you guys really didn't come uh, to listen to me talk. Uh, Mike Rooney, our head of school, is going to kind of walk you guys through um, our back to school preview. And I will go ahead and bring him in now. Hey, thanks, Nate. Absolutely. Good to see you. How are we doing, Mike? Hey, we're good. As you know, this, this campus is abuzz with activity. Uh, all the safety protocols are in place. Uh, and we continue to really prep and look forward to having uh, students and families back on campus soon. Uh, we've got a full docket. Um, we've been prepping. So I just want to give the families a quick update that um, we had 47 responses to the survey, basically how you're doing. So out of 47 families on a scale of five being, hey, we're, we're really good, ready to go uh, to one like I'm not. Uh, we had an average of 4.23. So I don't know about you, it's pretty good. That's what I, I, I was hoping to have certainly north of three, maybe even north of four we did. Uh, we just, but to let you know, we had two families that were one. Um, this were anonymous, so I don't know who you are. Um, please call us if this doesn't address what you need. Clearly a one family at a two, and we had seven families at three. And I'd be honest, I don't want you down in that feeling that way. So please connect with us. Um, and again, I sent out an email the other night about different ways to do that specifically. Uh, but teachers, principals, and even me, M. Rooney at PCAschool.org. So that's just an overview. And we're going to kick it off with a couple things. Uh, we got a couple of videos that are prepped that are going to summarize this. Um, and so uh, Nate and uh, Dr. Kerry Abood, I did a, a, a video, an overview video of what we've done and what to expect. So Nate, if you want to roll that, it's about four minutes long, gang. So uh, please take a look and then we'll go go from there. Dr. Abood here. This year will be filled with new and exciting challenges for staff, faculty, parents, and students, but we are incredibly excited to take them all on together. With these challenges come changes to our regular schedules, classrooms, teaching styles, and so on. The first and most notable change you'll see at our lower school is our separation into houses. To maintain consistent groupings of students, and to minimize exposure to other classes, PCAP and lower school students will each belong to their own house. On the screen, you'll see how our lower school building will be divided into the following areas, PCAP, primary, elementary, junior high, and our public sector. When we all return to campus, you'll see signage that clarifies which house you'll be entering. Also, you'll see signage on the floor directing students which way to fly throughout the building. Above our sanitation stations, reminding students to cover their beak, wash their wings, and remain socially distant from one another. And lastly, you'll be met by signage at our exterior doors, reminding all of us to love our neighbor by not entering the building unless we're healthy. We've also made a few changes inside the classroom. Student desks will be spaced six feet apart as recommended by the governor, and each grade level has either been divided into three separate homerooms 
or two homerooms plus a third flex space because we all benefit from a little more space. We have even expanded our PCAP house to include more space for dramatic play and an art studio. And let's not forget the technology. In each classroom, you'll also see some exciting new technology that will help us meet the needs of on and off-site students. You'll see two monitors, a document camera, and a writing tablet that each teacher can use for daily instruction. Should a student need to miss school for an extended period of time, this technology will allow our teachers to synchronously teach to the student while also teaching to the on-site students as well. Lessons will be recorded for viewing at a later time for students who cannot tune in live or for those who simply want to review a key part of the instruction. The final changes you'll need to know are our changes to arrival and dismissal. This year, all families will receive a carpool number, even our upper school families. You will receive your carpool number either by mail or at our open house. Don't lose these cards. They are extra important this year. Arrival will begin at 7.45 a.m. each school day morning. Cars arriving before 7.45 are asked to queue in the lower school parking lot, beginning at the white hut near the stop sign. Please remember that only pre-registered before care students will be allowed access into the school buildings before 7.45 a.m. If you need to drop off before 7.45, be sure to register for before care. At 7.45, the arrival process will begin for all students in grades preschool through grade 12. A PCA staff member will confirm the completion of your family's health screening then direct you either to the upper school or lower school building to complete drop-off. Staff will confirm the health screening through real-time data access, which is linked to your displayed carpool number. If you completed your health screening before leaving home, you should be all clear for a smooth arrival. If, however, we cannot confirm your screening completion or your screening indicates that you should not be on campus, you will be asked to return to the lower school parking lot where you can complete the screening or follow up with our school nurse. Cars will then rejoin the arrival line once screening is complete. Once you enter the lower school loop, please allow your children to exit the vehicle and enter their designated house door, masks on, of course. There will be a door greeter at each house, junior high, primary, elementary, and PCAP, ready to welcome each student. PCAP families will need to pull up to the house door, briefly park, and walk their children to the entrance. This change protects our staff from the added exposure of reaching into many cars to unbuckle car seats every day. Though arrival does have its changes, dismissal is nearly the same as in years past. Dismissal begins at 3 p.m. for preschool through grade five. Cars are asked to queue in the same spot as arrival, with carpool numbers visible. Once your carpool number is called, proceed down Seaborn Drive and pick up your children directly outside each house door. Junior high and upper school students will dismiss at 320. Junior high cars will wait in the lower school parking lot near the NPR entrance. At 320, a staff member will dismiss students to your car by carpool number. Students will exit the building and walk directly to their cars for a quick and safe departure. As with before care, aftercare is now a pre-registered service, so be sure to register for your aftercare needs for quarter one now. The changes shared in this video are ways we are positively and safely preparing for your return to campus. We are making sure our school continues to be a unique and thriving community and we can't wait to see you soon. All right, so that should give you a broad overview of how we've changed a lot of things here at the lower school, but much of it for the returning families will be familiar. For our new families, I'm going to go through the arrival process in particular in more detail later. But one of the things that you probably picked up on, uh, Nate, and we talked about a little bit, is how important screening is. Uh, in order to bring the families on safely. 
uh, so that we all have confidence that we're that uh, we're arriving healthy and ready to go. And so what I'd like to do now, Nate, you did another video, a short video on screening, but let me just, again, before Nate rolls tape, is at midnight on any given school day, so 12.01 a.m., the portal opens. So our recommendation is you, you do the screening first thing in the morning when you get up. Um, it's just a few questions, um, and as you'll see, uh, but it's critical and important because we're going to get that, we're going to be able to see that live um, through Veracross, and you're going to do it through Veracross. We're going to show you how to do that. Um, and it, we will not let you drop your kids off unless you're screened. And we, and again, we'll talk through that here. And you saw a little bit in the video. So, Nate, if you could roll how to screen. So, imagine I'm a family. I'm at home. Let's just say I'm getting up early. I get up, you know, between five five thirty typically. Um, I open open my device. How do I screen? Go ahead, roll tape. Hi, everybody. Let's walk you through the screening process. On our website, in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a menu that says Parents. Click on that menu and navigate down to the Veracross option. When you click on this option, you'll be brought to your Veracross homepage, where, at the top of the page, you'll see your updated screening requirement for the day. Click on this screening section and begin filling out your daily screening as it shows on the screen. The application will automatically enter in your student's name and the date. If you have multiple students, you'll just need to select which student screening you're filling out in the drop-down menu. You'll be asked if your student has any flu-like symptoms, what the student's temperature is, if you've traveled outside New England in the last 14 days, and if your child has recently been tested for COVID-19. If your child has been tested recently, you can choose to put in the test results and the date of the test. After you've completed each of your children's screening, you'll be all set to join us for school that day. So a couple things happen uh, when you go through that. So the first is um, you'll have an opportunity to, if, to go right to another kid. It'll ask you, do you want to add, add another, another person? And so if you have multiple children, you call guests and it'll cycle you through um, until you're done. And then at the very end, you'll get that big green, you know, marker said, hey, it's been submitted, you're clear. And that's how you know. So until that's uh, through, then it, uh, it's not clear. So um, really good work on a, a bunch of people to bring that together. Uh, what that enables us to do is with one query and we can, we can get it live, uh, we can see who's pre-cleared on staff and faculty and also our students. Um, our requirement, though, is that you've done that by 7 a.m. Why is that? Because we start to receive students at 7.15 for before care. And we need enough time to work with families and all that type of thing. We need that 15-minute buffer. Um, so please make sure that you get that done by 7 a.m. every morning. Um, Nate, you also, you reminded me a lot of people are on their mobile devices. Um, so can you take us through what that looks like if, if you prefer to do it on your mobile device? Absolutely. So everybody, um, the interface on the your mobile device is really going to look the exact same. Um, I'll show you guys here. So, okay, my head's a little big, but you guys can see. Um, slide one, uh, this is what you're going to see when you first uh, open up your Veracross. You're going to log in, um, and then you're going to you know, put your information in. It's going to look the exact same as it does on the web. You're going to see uh, today's... Yeah, so that button at the top that's red, just touch it. It'll open up. Right. Yep. So go ahead and just uh, tap on that you know section that says today's COVID screening. You'll be brought to the exact same um, you know form that you have to fill out on the web. Just put in uh, your child's name or select your child from the drop down menu. Um, again, same answers, same everything. Um, go through that. Uh, hit submit. And then um, if you've got, you know, a couple students, then you'll want to go and hit submit another screening and go ahead and fill it in for your second or third or fourth student. And once you're all set, it'll tell you that you've fulfilled, you know, you've you've uh, you've screened everyone that you need to today and your kids are all set to be dropped off at school. Real simple, real easy. Yeah. So we were looking at a couple different options and we think that this is easiest. You're already in Veracross. Uh, if you're a new family, um, you need to make sure you can get in. If you can't get in, let us know. We'll work you through it. We'll uh, cycle you through. But 
getting getting into Veracross is key for all the school, but especially for screen. And so if you have any questions on that, again, uh, please put them in the chat uh, area. Uh, Nate will start to cycle those up. Um, but I, I think I cannot emphasize enough um, that the screening at where we're starting at this level of the school is you're doing 100% of the screening. Uh, if the situation changes um, and we go to what we call step three, is we will ask you to also require you to also screen, but we'll screen here also at the school, either in small groups or in larger groups. But right now we're starting off the school based on what we're seeing is you're doing the screening and we're confirming we have a system to verify that. And we, again, we will not let you drop off your, your students uh, unless you do that. Hey, so what I'd like Mike, to do is, um, go ahead, Nate. So real quick, I'm just seeing the, the uh, questions coming now and I figured we might as well uh, tackle these two while we're on the subject. Um, sure. As far as uh, Steve Michaud asked um, if screening can be done by the by the student, parents are the only ones that are doing the screening, and that's yeah. correct? That's correct. So parents, either parent uh, who's registered as a parent is the one who does the screening. Right. Um, and then uh, Lori Roden or Rodden asks uh, if is Veracross an app. And Veracross, I don't believe, has a, a mobile application, but it's something that um, you log into uh, by going to uh, a link um, that, that gets sent out. Yeah, so I sent you that link this morning and it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but if you go, as, as Nate showed you, if you go on the website and you go to that link and just that that URL, it's uh, basically it's at veracross.com um, login slash PCA. There's a short, and we'll get it out to you. We'll make sure you have it. But uh, you just create a, um, go to that on your mobile device or on your web browser. And then if it's on your mobile device, like I do, uh, as I've saved that as an icon on my desktop, and I just click that, and it's right there. And All right. By the way, in the new that so in the news of the week, so Lori, in the news of the week that you're going to get uh, here shortly, um, it's going to take you through the steps on how to add that to your home screen if you want to do that on your on your mobile device. So. Um... I think now that we've got uh, screening covered, I know, Mike, you had a, uh, a, a few slides that you wanted to share with everyone. So we'll go ahead and jump right into that. Yeah, I know that'd be great if you could. And then I've got a couple of, couple of slides and pictures. So I want to share. Um, so the first really in, uh, is the arrival time sequence. And so this is a slide just really on any given day. So I told you that, that screening opens up at 12.01 a.m. Before you arrive, one of the parents does the screening for all of the children in that household. Um, so that needs to be done by 7 a.m. Uh, and we've got a team here arriving. We're watching that. We're watching it for the staff. And um, we have staff arriving as early as 4.30. Um, and then at 7.15, uh, we've got the before care arrivals uh, are arriving here at the lower school. And so how are we going to work that? So before uh, the uh, the families get out of the car and drive away. We're going to have to confirm um, with the parents that we've got those th those children screened appropriately. So that's how that's our control mechanism there. And then for those of you, especially those that are going to work, um, is we recommend, you, especially early on in the year before we sort all this out, because we've never done an arrival sequence like this, uh, is that you queue up in the lower school parking lot. And I'll show you on the map here in a second what that looks like. But basically, it forms a line. If you've been in the in the at PCA before, it's our dismissal queue uh, for the lower school. So it's the same idea. But this is for upper school and lower school uh, queue up because at 7:45, uh, we're going to uh, start the arrival process, and so there are going to be two people out on the hill um, who are going to confirm that all of, that your number, that that big number you saw uh, that ran a five by eight card, is is cleared. And we're going to wave you through as if you're you're approved, um, and we'll talk about it if you're not that if, if the screening process is not complete or there's a problem with the screening process, um, we have a process to to get you in and sort of in the holding pen and we'll work with you, get you set and get you on your way. But if you if you do are trying to get to work, I recommend you arrive early, uh, queue up, uh, especially till we sort this out. And then at 8:15 for half an hour, the arrival process is going to end. So we're going to take people off. So late arrivals, and I know things happen. We all do. We're, we're, so we have a process for late arrivals. And we're going to ask that you, uh, if you're at the lower school, again, I'll show you how this works on the map, is you're going to park and you're going to bring your students in. You're going to in process through the front desk at the main entrance. And then we're going to work with you and then get, get your students to those, those, um, their houses of wherever they're going. 
Um, for the upper school, um, they can park uh, or you can drop them off, but we need you to be available for contact until they process through. So either you can walk in with them or you can stay in the car until they're, they're clear. Remember, as a parent, you're the only one who can process them, them through. And some of these are, are permissions that are set uh, in to make sure that we have a, a responsible individuals um, that, and you're confident about who else is uh, clearing students to come in. So that's the key arrival timeline. What I'd like to do is, is really take you through the arrival sequence before 745. And so what you can see up on the screen here is your normal arrival, right? So it's orange because we're not, we haven't fully green lighted everybody through. And you're gonna stop right at the top of the hill. So as you come in and you queue up around the lower school parking lot, again, lower school, upper school, um, will queue up there in a line and those will wrap around. And at 745, we'll start to look, we'll look that number on that first car. And if it's been cleared, we're gonna wave that number through. And so where does that go? So 745, that, that yellow is, we're looking at those numbers. And if you're a lower school, if you have a number without a U at the end, so if you, you will go and come up, take a right and go down to the lower school. And you can see that you'll, if you have a sixth to eighth grader, you will stop at the sixth to eighth grade house entrance and let your junior high student off. And if, I'm just gonna imagine for sake of argument, you have four children, one in each house. Then you'll pull forward to K2, let your K2 out, pull forward to 3-5, let your 3-5 out, and then you're going to go up to PCAP. You're going to stop, get out, and take your PCAP, PCAPer in, PCA preschooler into the door. And then you'll be off and on your way. If you're a high school student, um, we'll see that you have a U at the end of your number. Uh, again, that's typically on the visor. Um, you can hold it up, but we recommend you strap it to the visor, flip your visor down. We can see it. We'll wave you through. You're going to take a left. Um, there will be Gene Watson, our security, will be there and additionally for traffic control because you can see we're crossing some routes. Um, and some of our upper school students drive, so they'll go down and they'll park. Some of our uh, parents uh, drop them off and you'll just go down to the drop off station as normal. You'll drop them off. But again, they will. nobody will have gotten to that point unless they've been uh, confirmed with their, their screening, which is why all of those are green dots. There's no stop there. You're cleared through uh, and you can drop off. Um, and so Gene Watson will also stand to make sure that nobody just drives down and goes to the upper school direct, which is how we've normally done it in the past. Uh, he'll be down there just below that, get that yellow bubble. Um, so that's going to go for half an hour at 8 15. Um, we're going to take people the, off the hill, but you have a question like, what if I don't pass screening? So what if something happened, right? Either I forgot it. Um, it didn't go through, there's a technical issue. You answered yes to one of those questions and the, the nurses call out to the Hill and say, hey, we need to talk to the Smith family, you know, 222 as their, their card number. Uh, what we may do, what we'll do is we'll wave you around and ask you to go down back into the parking lot. Um, and then we have a, a staff representative there. So for example, if you forgot to, you know, take a temperature or whatever, we'll, we'll initially be able to help you for the first several weeks. I hear with the thermometer and extra staff. Um, and so we're going to figure out how this process works. And then you'd have to get back in the queue to get back out. So what we're trying not to do here is hold up everyone else behind you, knowing that you're going to need a, a couple minutes, need to stop the car, get the screening complete, work with the staff member to cycle through. But this is our plan, how we're going to do it. Again, whether you're upper school or lower school, this this will work. So this is the arrival sequence if you come in after 8.15 for whatever reason. Let's just say you had a morning dentist appointment with your, with your family and you said, hey, we're gonna come in at about nine or 10 o'clock. You've still done your screening ahead of time. Um, and so obviously the screening team is off the hill. Uh, so if you're the lower school, we need you to come in and park, then you need to go walk to the main desk and check in through there. Um, if you're at the upper school, either you get dropped off or you park, you come in, you have to check in and, and with uh, Mrs. Cummings at the office at, uh, again, as we described right there before you go to your classes. Um, and so I, I hopefully that gives you a picture of what, how we do the mechanics of arrival and dismissal and our screenings. Um, again, we've, we've practiced it, but we haven't done it at scale. I mean, this is gonna be a lot of cars. And so uh, just know we're gonna be ready early to go. Um, but your screening is the key and our ability to get you through and on your way uh, with your kids safely arrived is, is our goal and we're gonna get there. Um, 
one of the things that came up in the survey that I wanted to address were some of the safety protocols. Some of you had some questions to include notifications. And I think they're, we've covered them in the past, but it's worth going over again. So there are a lot of reasons why students don't come to school. Um, some of them are health-related, some of them are not. Um, the requirement, the, the agreement that we have is that if you have a student uh, with a confirmed exposure, as defined in our back-to-school guide, or has a positive test, you need to uh, notify the school as soon as possible. Um, that will trigger a series of really analysis at our end and probably contact on a confirmed uh, case uh, if we haven't been contacted already with uh, with the Department of Health and Human Services and the contact tracing. Um, if that happens after hours, uh, we have a mechanism to notify families that they're most affected. Um, and so there, again, protocols, we, we haven't exercised that, we've never had a case, but we have gone through a drill of how we would do that. Um, so we, the bottom line is you'll be called if there's, a, if there's confirmed close contact. Um, the second has to do with if you've been exposed. And if you've been exposed, the whole thought is, hey, you just pull your, your student out, right? I mean, they, they, would be, they wouldn't pass the screening criteria, but if you somehow got the call in the middle of the day um, that you have a confirmed exposure with your child, uh, or if you're concerned, then we ask you contact us. Um, and we have a, a method to just uh, very, I think, respectfully uh, help your child move to a location outside move to an isolation room or wait for your arrival and pick up. And then, you know, we have a mechanism again of how to clean the room, disinfect it, obviously with the students out and then start to assess what's going on. Um, because we're six feet apart for the vast majority of the time and all the other protocols in place, the likelihood of uh, confirmed exposure inside of the school is relatively low, but it's not zero. So we're gonna be assessing that and notifying people of that. Um, and so just know that the communication is key to all this. So the other one is if we start to see sickness with three or more students of really any type that's contagious, we're gonna to start to notify you in general. Uh, the key here that we all have to work through is that we're gonna respect each family. Um, we have to by law, we're also gonna do so by practice while also protecting everyone else. And so, um, I think you may have questions related to that. There are so many different variables of how this could come about. I just want you to know that the keys are, there's confirmed exposure, not suspected exposure, confirmed exposure and a confirmed case or what will trigger a more broad notification. Because we've isolated people at the lower school by house, we're gonna look by classroom and who, where those students may be going as to see where else there may be um, you know, uh, exposure and uh, we'll work with the medical authorities and figure out how to notify you. Um, and I recognize that some of you may be very good with that and others may not, but I wanna be upfront with you about what we are gonna do and what we're not gonna do. So notice I didn't say suspected exposure um, because suspected exposure occurs a lot. Uh, every time I go to uh, market basket or whatever, I have, there's a potential for exposure. And so we're not reporting that. Uh, and so not to you, I mean, we're, we're aware and people who are concerned, we encourage you to contact us. And if you are concerned, we encourage you for your family, we encourage you to go off site for, for a bit um, before you come back on. Uh, and we recognize the prerogative of the parents in this case of, to maintain the safety of their children. Um, we will not allow school to continue in any way, shape or form at any scale if we don't think it's safe uh, and healthy for those individuals. We're not trying to force anything here. We have an on-site and an off-site option for a reason, um, and we will continue to communicate with you in the process. So I think that's important. I, that doesn't answer all of them, and Nate, I don't know if we have any questions that are popping up right now because of that, and uh, we can address them now if they're there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there are a few questions, and a couple of them have to do with uh, the screening process again. One yeah. asked, um, for morning arrival, what about kids that walk or ride bikes? Um, that, that's a good question. Yeah. So here's, here's the thing. They're going to pass that hill and we're going to probably need to know if they walk or ride and we can check. So we need to know their number. So they probably ought to have a number. They may not need to carry a big number around with them. Um, uh, but they ought to, without, if they can, they ought to have it. It will just help us move it through faster because of people at the top of the hill. Um, so what we don't want them to do is diving down, you know, going to the, you know, like I have a, I have a student who's a skateboard. He can skateboard, <laughs> skateboard to school. Like K 
Caleb, my son, has to go all the way around. He just can't dive, take the short route um, because we need to check everybody in. Great question there. But that's the way around it. And then along those same lines, um, another uh, parent asked, what if the, the child drives themselves? The idea is that um, if your child is driving him or herself, they need their carpool number um, to show us uh, up, up at the top of the hill. Yep. And so I think there has to be uh, a great amount of communication between, you know, you and your child about making sure that the screening gets done. And if they don't, um, you know, your child has to be able to get in contact with you to get that form filled out. Um, is that is that right, Mike? Yeah, you know, that's that's right. And you know, for whatever reason, I mean, if the if the um, you know, let's say you had to go to work early and your spouse was traveling and whatever, and for some reason, uh, you know, it, it didn't happen or the temperature wasn't taken. We we have ways to take temperature here. It's just going to slow things down, and so slow things down for your your child. And so, um, but the bottom line is that we have a way to to support through it. It's just, uh, but we need you to uh, work with your high school student. As they come on, um, they can drive on their own. They can get through, but we'll be looking for that number. That's the key. One of the in our rehearsal this morning, we're all out front working through the the arrival and dismissal rehearsal. Um, one of the scenarios we came up with was an upper school student who's driving a lower school student, and how does that work? And so the bottom line is again, the parent still gets both of those students through. The upper school student can drive. We'll get through the queue. We'll go through drop probably drop the lower school student because we don't want the lower school student walking. Right. So they're going to get through, um, drop off at the, one of those points, and then we'll cycle back through and go, just go down. They don't have to go through the whole line again. And we have a mechanism to make sure that the, the upper school student can just get go up, swing down, park, and uh, go into school. So great question. Um, and then the next question asks uh, when the parents will get uh, their carpool numbers. Um, now she says, or, or he says that my high school student got one, but my junior high student did not. It's only one carpool number per family, correct? That's right. So that's a good, good clarification. So you should have seen on yours, um, and help me and if you're there, and I, I'm sorry I don't have your name, but um, you should have a U uniform at the end of your number. What that tells us is, is that you have a high school student, U is upper school, as well as a lower school student, depending on the number, it's usually a lower number, 100, 200, 300 series. And so we know when we see that, that, hey, there's an upper school student with a lower school student in this carpool or in this, in this family car. So the upper school students, those are all mailed out. Lower school students, you will receive those on Monday when you come to your open house. And so if you're not able to make the open house, I encourage you to reach out to Carrie Abood, C-A-B-O-O-D at PCAschool.org um, and her team. Let us know. We'll make sure that you get your number. We'll get you on board. But we really encourage you to be here on Monday. It'll be a different uh, process for bringing you on board and screening. I'll touch on that at the very end. Uh, but you're, you'll get your carpool numbers uh, Monday at Open House. Um, so then next question, I think they might have joined uh, a little bit late, asks uh, where they get the screening link. I believe that um, Shirley Tootin was going to send out a, um, a daily reminder to, to everyone, right, with the, the Bear Cross login? Yeah. So I think we're going to, our intent is for the first several weeks is we'll send out an email reminder in the morning with the link to PCAschool.org. We'll, we'll push it out as well. Um, I'll make sure it's in the now if we haven't, or we'll send it out separately tonight if the, what the link is to Veracross. But it's your base. If, if you're a current family or returning family, um, it's your, it's your Veracross login. It's the normal one is on the parent portal. Um, if you're a new family, we need to Make sure you get you get on Veracross because that's how you're going to do it. Again, if you're having trouble, please contact us uh, so you, you can get there. Um, let's see. We'll move on to what the process is for having uh, to pick a student up early, so prior to 3 p.m. Yeah, that's a great question. And a lot of that happens, again, let's just say there's a doctor's appointment in the early afternoon. Uh, it's, again, back to communication. Um, and then... Uh, you will, if you're at the lower school, um, you will contact the way you normally do the office, coordinate an early pickup, um, and then you will meet your child uh, at an exit for that door. They'll be dismissed and brought, and we make sure that there's confirmed handoff uh, to you, but you will use the loop. We do not want you coming in. We do not want you walking in <clears throat> really at any time during this, excuse me. <clears throat> But we'll get them to you. So same for the upper school. 
Um, the dismissal pr process is routine. Again, call in, communicate for the authorization, uh, and then you'll meet your child. Typically, they'll come out on their own at that point and meet you down at the pickup area. Um, and then, so I think I'll add to that a little bit. Uh, the key here is that when you're picking and dropping off your student, you're stopping at their house. Um, so in that video that we saw uh, that I made with uh, Dr. Abood, you stop at you know the junior high house to drop off your junior high kid. You stop at the primary house uh, entrance at the front doors to drop them off, elementary and PCAP. And it's the same way um, if you have to pick the student up as well. You're, you're picking them up at, uh, at their house. Um, next one we'll talk about uh, with multiple families who might carpool together. Um, yep. I, I would say it's the same thing, right? Everyone's got to have that carpool number and we'll judge, you know, we'll be able to see who is screened based off of them having their carpool number visible. Yeah, so that happens fairly routinely. But what we see is on the visor held up, we see both of those numbers and we can confirm both of those numbers are clear. So if the Jones family and the Smith family um, and the Suarez's, for example, are all together, um, we're gonna need all, all three numbers. And so, you know, I know that we only, I think we sent two out per, you know, but the other one is, I think with a good, good marker, um, if you're doing in a carpool like that is, you know, I think you can generate one of those pretty quickly. If we, we'll get to know you after a while. And then obviously if we're, we have some, if it's not clear to us, um, we'll ask you to stop. We'll roll down the, we'll figure it out pretty quickly. But I think the goal is we want to encourage as much as you're comfortable, encourage, um, you to help each other out. Um, I think I might've accidentally skipped over one. Uh, we have one question from a new family, uh, who asks, uh, do we queue in the same place for aftercare pickup? Um, and I think that would be straight to the to house, right? If it's aftercare, they're not getting in the in the queue at dismissal. Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, aftercare is, is is different this year. It's by house. So before care and aftercare are are by house, um, and I'll, I'll we'll make sure I confirm that. But um, and so again, the very similar approach. Uh, what we're trying to do is focus everybody and keep everybody in their houses as much as possible. And so I, I think it's, a, it, again, a very valid question. And if you've done aftercare with us in the past, especially at the lower school, you parked, you walked in, got your, got your student. And then, um, again, uh, same parent asked, are we expected to screen before picking up in the afternoon as well? Um, they won't have to. You guys won't have to because if you've screened in the morning, uh, we know that, you know, your child is all set and you're all set uh, to come and pick them up as well. Yeah, no, I, that's right. I think the good news for you is it's a four question screening. I'd ask you to read it because it has some, you know, it will alert you if the wording changes, but some of the symptoms, as you know, sometimes change, but, you know, confirm the symptoms. It's four questions. It moves you through pretty quickly, but you only have to do it once a day. If something changes uh, from your perspective, I mean, at, we just ask you to give us a call, but great question only once a day. Um, and remember that the way it's set up is your child will be coming out and going right to your car and getting in. Um, obviously, we'll have an adult there from the school to make sure that that handoff works. But uh, that's why we don't need another screening because we really don't have contact th uh, that direction. Um, and then one of the, the last questions, a little bit off topic, but uh, are there going to be any outside classrooms this year? Yeah, so we're highly encouraging, especially while the weather's good. But even when the weather's cold, is to dress up and get outside and really enjoy God's creation. So uh, we've got some... Um, some awnings that are not awnings, basically some light light cover going going in, <clears throat> where we can get the students out. Man, I'm having a tough time with my voice today. <clears throat> but yes, short answer is yes. But we don't have anything that's purpose built that way. But all the teachers are trying to get out as much as possible. Well, um, it's looking like we've covered all of the questions that uh, have been posed that I'm looking at. Um, guys, if you have any last minute questions, feel free to, uh, to throw them in the comment section below and we'll, we'll get, try to get those answered before we, uh, close out here. Yeah. But, um, I go on? What's that? Can I go on, Nate, to the, uh, yeah. instruction for our offsite families? Yes, absolutely. So <clears throat> we, we have about 15 families who are going to start offsite. And so, um, I think a great question that came up in the survey, uh, is when we're going to connect with you. I, and I acknowledge that most of our focus has been to physically receive. And I apologize if we haven't given you an update, but 530 
on Zoom. You're going to get a link coming out from Dr. Abood and, uh, and probably a separate one coming from the high school. But playing on 530 on Monday, which is the end of our open house, we're going to have an open house, an online open house with you on Zoom. Make sure that you're tied in, expectations are clear, and the principals are going to lead that for their respective schools. Um, and so I think that, you know, so if you could hold, if you have questions, um, I'm going to ask that you send those directly to the principals, as I sent out my email the other day, to make sure you're ready to go. But I would say, please confirm you're on Veracross, um, whether you're new or returning family. Uh, if you're a returning family, um, your students should still have access or you should have a, access to Microsoft Teams. I recommend that you check in, log in, make sure that's up and running. Those are two key areas. Um, and if you're a new family, um, I think the Veracross is the key and then we'll get you up on Teams a, as soon as possible. Um, we'll also work on, a, you'll get instructions on how to pick up books and when to do that. Uh, that's obviously a, a key piece. And um, but we'll have a we'll have a great start, and we're looking forward to having you. And so I think I just wanted to close out because I think a lot of the questions uh, that we touched on really were what are the expectations on school life in the first weeks? You know, Nate said it earlier is that our our goal is that grace would abound here. And so we were during the rehearsal, and you know, there's some discussion going back and forth, of, and uh, you know, we, we reminded each other that although we've done the plan and the plan might work, it's I think it's a good solid plan. Um, We've never run it at scale before. And so for us and for you, uh, just know that we're going to extend grace to you. I mean, we have not done an arrival process ever in the history of the school like this. And so we're going to need to extend grace to you as well. Uh, we need it as we start. Uh, I think it, you know if we come here early, time is our friend on the front end, um, and we'll, we'll make it work. We're all trying to make this work. That's the great news of all this is that so many people want to bring their students, their, your children back on campus safely. Uh, and we want to sustain that as long as possible. Uh, we don't want, we call it unforced error. We want no pick sixes in their first week or so uh, when we throw one that we didn't, you know, into the hands of, of the COVID defender, right, or whatever. Um, and so, you know, we're going to hold to our protocols uh, graciously, but clearly our teachers are going to serve as role models. Our returning uh, students who are class leaders, uh, we've already asked to serve as models of how to maintain social distance, how to continue to, to keep this opportunity of coming back to school a reality um, really through the whole year. And so I think, you know, to some degree, um, you know, we have a lot to gain. We also have a lot to lose. And so doing this well and complying and understanding what we're complying with is really key here. And so I think one of the things you're going to see um, here is uh, it's going to show up on your Veracross. And this is coming right out of the, sorry, right out of the back to school guide um, that a lot of you have um, is this agreement. And Nate, if you could flash that up, that'd be great. But really, you know, you've agreed, we've all agreed to, to do screening. We've all agreed to do distancing as appropriate, right? There are times that for the vet, we're going to start off at six feet is the norm. There are times we're going to come together at recess and in other times uh, as laid out in the back to school guide for labs, for reading groups, for short periods of time. And when we do that, we'll be protected. And you acknowledge that we'll have masks on for some time, but not all the time. So our PCAPers will not be wearing masks. They're Teachers will be, but they, the students will not be. That was one of the questions that came in through the survey. Um, and our goal here is to really enable uh, the human interaction. Uh, and so the protecting is really, we're able to use both. Uh, we recommend it and uh, we're working to have the, you know, the, um, the face coverings on a lanyard um, just so that they, you know, they're easily accessible, but they're not always on. They can be off. They can be on pretty quickly. And then, you know, I think the key that, you know, can't overemphasize the importance of communicating. That includes your questions, uh, includes clarification, includes letting us know when we're doing something that, you know, is contrary to what we've put out or told you. Uh, I think despite our best efforts, I think we're going to mess some, a few things up. Uh, please let us know so we can fix them. Um, knowing that our intent is to make this as smooth and easy as possible for you because we know your time is valuable uh, we want it to be a great experience for uh, all of your children whether they've been at pca for many years or they're just coming for the first time uh, clearly we need you to communicate about symptoms exposure and any other concerns you have whether it's health 
but also just for the standard, you know, things that happen in, uh, as you start a new school year, right? So just communicate with your teacher. Um, we're going to encourage our, you know, communication from our end back to you. <clears throat> uh, if you say no mas, you know, I, Rooney, you're killing me with all this communication. Uh, I, you know, somebody told me a long time ago, it's really hard to over communicate. It can happen. And so let us know, especially if you don't know what to listen to. I'll tell you your key is of error cross and the parent portal. Um, and then you're going to see from, from me news of the week. And then I'll communicate key things to you uh, separately uh, as they happen. And clearly, if there's a change in the health situation, we're going to be coming, coming right away. One of the things we're going to ask you to do is to agree uh, that you're going to continue to abide by this. And this is important, not just for us at PCA, but for each of you. So you know that every other family has agreed to do this. Um, and is willing to sign off on that. You're going to see that on the parent portal coming up. Uh, but just, I think, you know, just knowing our expectation is that we're going to do what we say we're going to do. And we need, you know, your confirmation that you and your children are going to do what you say you're going to do. And I think the good news is that we all want to do it. And, uh, and we all want to have a, a great school year. And so I think this gives us added confidence going forward um, that we, what we can, you know, what we can do to maintain uh, the safety and health of the school. Um, a couple, you used the words in, in it in your question to me of how can you ensure or how can you guarantee, um, gang. That I'll be honest with you. That that is the that is the domain of our good Lord, right? I can't ensure or guarantee much of anything except best effort. What I can tell you with confidence is we have layered this approach um, to screening. Uh, and we have ways to make it even more robust if we need to, uh, to cleaning, which we didn't talk about a lot here. There weren't a lot of questions uh, on that. Um, but cleaning surfaces, uh, making sure there's fresh air. Uh, we have ways that we've done in that to protecting um, and then to how we move, right? And so the movement patterns uh, are, are well established. Um, again, we're asking and we're going to expect and we'll gently guide people to uh, you know, comply with those. But when you add all those together, I think we have a really robust and strong approach to maintaining life, health, and safety. I frankly am more concerned about our students being exposed off campus at this point than I am on. Um, but we can't control that. We're going to control what we can on campus. And that takes nothing away from what you're doing. I mean, just life life is happens. I mean, I go, go to the grocery store, I go out, I see certain people. Um, and I think there's there, there's risk there as well. And so um, I'm looking forward to continuing uh, here with you in a few days. And um, I, Nate, are there any other questions that you're seeing coming up? So um, we did have a pretty good question um, from, I believe her name is Amber. Yeah, so Amber asks, if teachers are taking the class outside for lessons and activities, how is that going to work for the remote students? Yeah, so great, great question, Amber. So what will typically you, you'll start to see happening, uh, um, teacher will do it a little differently, is we'll recommend to the remote, to the offsite student is, hey, this is what you need to go, you, know, you should go do. And so remember that for the offsite students, I mean, the parents, you have a big role in, in the offsite aspect of this. Um, clearly that, that if they're in a synchronous classroom, they're in a synchronous classroom. Uh, but when they're, you know, when they're not, when they do an activity or when they're in small groups, um, the teacher will have direction um, if they're getting able to include or not uh, with the offsite student. So, um, and then yes. uh, Kevin asks, is the pre-screen loaded in Veracross yet? He says he's not seeing it. That might be something that um, he needs to reach out to uh, his appropriate principal, right? So, yeah, so you actually won't see it until the midnight of the day that this, the school starts. So you should see that, uh, I think your expectations, you should see that at 12.01 a.m. on Monday morning is when you're gonna see that for the first time. So when you wake up Monday morning, you'll see that. If you're, you know, I think almost everybody, I'll confirm, but if you're coming on, if you're a new student um, or you're a freshman at the upper school, you, you should see that. Well, um, I think that pretty much covers it, Mike. And um, I think one thing you brought up was the uh, the cleaning, right? Um, we've had in-service going on this week, and um, we had Force of Nature, which is a company down in uh, Boston that uh, did kind of gave us a, a product run through of the, the cleaning solution that we'll be using on the desks around here. And really uh, incredible stuff uh, that they've put together 
but it's really safe for the kids. Um, it does the job. And Mike, I actually, uh, as you were bringing that up, I brought that that video into the queue here. So um, if you remember that video that they showed us in in service, I have that here. If you want to show uh, the parents, yeah, why don't you go ahead and roll it? Yeah, so we'll show that to you guys just to kind of give you a sense of um, you know the the types of steps that we're taking to make sure that everyone is safe from you know the the faculty and the staff, the teachers, the families. Um, in more ways than just preventing COVID, right? So we're even going to the extent of making sure that the cleaning solutions that we're using are also safe um, for all the kids to be around all day. So I'll go ahead and bring that in now. Watching this video, chances are you're not a chemist and that's okay because understanding how force of nature works just comes down to simple science. There are three, and only three, ingredients that go into Force of Nature multi-purpose cleaner, disinfectant, and deodorizer, salt, water, and vinegar. No dyes, fragrances, or additives that can cause irritation, allergies, or trigger asthma. Nope, nada. Not on our watch. Now back to the science bit again. Each salt and water molecule is made up of different elements. You might remember this from middle school. Salt is made of sodium and chloride. And water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. You know, good old H2O. Now here comes the fun part. When you push Force of Nature's start button, it sends an electrical current through the solution that breaks apart the molecules and scrambles up the elements to form two new power molecules. Newly formed sodium hydroxide cleans up sticky messes, soap scum, and grime on virtually any surface. And newly formed hypochlorous acid deodorizes and disinfects 99.9% .9 of germs, including staph, MRSA, salmonella, norovirus, and listeria. The best part? It's gentle to use. No hazmat suits, goggles, gloves, or face masks needed. You don't want to scare anyone, do you? Oh wait, the vinegar. Sorry, almost forgot. Vinegar lowers the pH level, or acidity of the solution, so that just the right amounts of sodium hydroxide and hypochlorous acid are created. So there you have it. The secret behind the power of force of nature. Three ordinary ingredients you can actually pronounce in our patented appliance that jolts them into action. Force of nature, combining simple science and gentle ingredients for a 99.9% .9 germ-free clean. So again, yeah. just a, a, a cute little video, but um, just to kind of show uh, to what extent we're going to to um, to make sure that everybody's safe around here. Yeah. So I think just to close out on that one. So uh, we were looking for a two-part cleaning and sanitizing and disinfecting approach. So during the day, that's what that's what your the the teachers and the students are going to have access to. Um, and so we it needed to be safe. We needed to be child friendly. Um, and certified that way, not just advertised that way. And so it took us a while to find one, and we're thankful we found one. At night, we're going to disinfect each classroom with something that's a little bit more powerful that will dry um, by the next morning that will kill. Both of these, with uh, 10 minutes of exposure, will kill COVID and other viruses like that. And so um, we just wanted to show you that we just got that, that all those stocks arrived for Force of Nature this week, uh, distributing it out to, taught the teachers how to use it, how to mix it, electrolyte it. And so, um, so anyway, that's, I think just another example of one of the steps we're taking. Um, I, you know, I, I got some feedback at the other, uh, another town hall not too long ago that, Hey, you guys are being, you know, you think you can defeat the virus. Uh, you're, you know, basically being arrogant. I, I hope I'm not coming across that way. Uh, hopefully we're coming across as being confident about the steps that we're taking and the cooperation that's required. Um, there, again, I said I can, there's nothing we can guarantee and ensure except best effort, right? Um, and our, our utter commitment uh, with our lives to protect your children. Uh, we will we will give you that. <clears throat> um, but you know we're all making the best effort here, and we're confident enough. And I recognize that not everybody may be in the same position. Um, you have a different take. Uh, somebody wrote last night that just recommended we not hold in class. You know. Um, you know, until the end of the first quarter. Um, we've looked at the risk factors and we recognize and respect the fact that other school districts and other schools are making different decisions based on their circumstances. Um, and so we're trying to just be upfront with you about how we're going to start, what we're going to do. Um, and again, we have an on-site and off-site option. And uh, we are confident having met with a lot of you is that you really want that excellent education with biblical integration 
to do together as a community as much as possible to do it obviously safely and well. And so we've worked, we'll continue to work to be upfront and transparent with you. Um, it's not airtight, but it's a layered approach. And we just ask you to continue prayer uh, for wisdom as we go forward and protection. And so we're really excited about the year. We're going to learn, we have learned a lot. We're going to learn a lot. Um, and again, communication is the key. I did want it. There was one note uh, that this came in real late. I think there's a question about uh, what people need to bring on, on Monday. So at the upper school in particular. <clears throat> so if you have a new student arriving at the upper school, or if that includes our, all of our freshman class, it's pre-screened as you come in. Uh, when you come into the door, um, there'll be someone to check, but you'll be posted on the door which homeroom to go to, and there'll be people there to guide you. I, and at that place will be your schedule for the day, for Monday. And it'll have your, your key card, your key fob, so you can get around the school and enter the doors. And it'll have your academic schedule. So if you want to bring your school supplies, uh, you'll have access to your locker and you can drop them off there. If you don't or you want to bring some of them, um, you can. So the upper school, hopefully that's some guidance there. Uh, at the lower school, um, you're coming in on a cycle. Uh, we're dividing our students and families out. Um, that, remember, you, we'll get you to arrive. Uh, you'll park. Um, you'll come in. We'll get the screening done at that point if it hasn't been done already. Um, and then you'll come in and you'll get your carpool number there when you visit your your uh, your students' homeroom. So I wanted to close the loop because I think on Monday, you know, we're all trying to get ready, get settled for the weekend, um, and have it like what's going to happen Monday morning. Uh, hopefully that that gives you a good feel of uh, expectations. And again, if you have questions, please reach out, contact us. Uh, we're going to be working the rest of the day, and a good portion of us going to be working tomorrow. Make sure we're ready to go. Uh, hopefully, um, you have a great weekend. Thank you again for taking the time. Um, you know how to reach us. Look for the news of the week, and uh, we can't wait to see you on campus soon. If I could close this in prayer, we'll get going, and I'll turn it back to you, Nate. Lord, thank you again. Um, this is both humbling and exciting. Uh, we're so thankful for the opportunity going forward, and we just pray for our families, our parents, our the ch their children. As we start this year, <clears throat> we pray that you would help us to stay safe, remind us of how to love our neighbors well, uh, help us to understand what our neighbors are going through, our friends, the ones that are returning, and our new friends we've yet to meet. And we just pray that we could um, just continue to build one another up uh, in encouragement and in love and good deeds. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. All right, Nate, thanks. And for <laughs> Sorry about that, Mike. <laughs> All right, well, I forgot about the 430 town hall, but we're good. Yeah, right. that's great. Praise. Thanks so much. I don't know if she can hear me. So how is uh how is participation? I didn't pull up the host chat. Yeah, so uh Mike, we're we're still live, my bad. I I brought you uh I brought you out a little early. Um, oh. I do just I do just want to say real quick uh to all the families watching that um these first of all, these Facebook lives aren't gonna stop. Um the plan is to continue doing them, you know, into the first month or two into the year to keep you guys updated on where we're at. Um, it's one thing to talk about what we're planning to do, but it's another thing to, you know, to update you guys on what we are doing. And um, the plan is to give you guys a good look at what that looks like in the first month. Um, and also look back at some of the, the, the other Facebook lives that we've done. Um, I've seen on Facebook, there have been a lot of people asking questions that some have been answered uh, in the, the recent Facebook lives that we've done in the past. So if you check out uh, Portsmouth Christian Academy's YouTube channel, you'll see the Facebook live broadcasts all pre-recorded uh, right at the, the top of our channel that you can kind of skim through and um, look for the answers to the questions that you're asking. But I that that's all for me. That's great. If you guys want another live redo, we're going to do a Zoom one at, at uh, 430 this afternoon. That's what I was trying to say. And I have to say I had a live mic moment. So it's all good. God bless you guys. Thanks again, Nate. We'll see you guys. We'll see you soon. All right.